Today on Ham Radio Q&A, we're strolling through that two-meter band. Welcome to Ham Radio Q&A, the show where you ask the questions and I provide the answers. Do you have a question about amateur radio antennas or operating procedures? Uh, leave your Leave your question in the comments below or email your question to kb9vbr at jpol-antenna.com. With that out of the way, on to the show. A popular landing spot for most new amateur radio operators is the 2 meter band. With the popularity of inexpensive handheld radios and the proliferation of 2 meter repeaters, it's no wonder that this is the new, tech is this, is this the new technician's first experience with ham radio. But the 2 meter band isn't all voice and repeaters. Today we're going to talk about the band plans how they organize the 2 meter band, and what you can expect to find between 144 and 148 megahertz. A band plan is an agreement of what radio modes and operations should take place on a certain frequency. They carry no weight of law, but, all, but almost all hams accept them as such. Remember, radio spectrum is a finite resource and the FCC has given amateur radio operators a lot of latitude in policing their own, their own chunk of spectrum. So now there's a now there is a bit of spectrum in the 2 meter band that the FCC does specify for an intended purpose within the part, rules of part 97 and we'll talk about that in a bit. But for the most part the FCC gives amateur radio coordinating and organizing bodies the power to manage their own spectrum. So let's start at the bottom of the band. 144.0 to 144.1 megahertz is reserved exclusively for continuous wave or CW Morse coda weak signal work. This allocation is set by the FCC in the Amateur Radio Part 97 rules. And you'll get in trouble with the feds if you transmit something other than CW in this chunk of spectrum. Moving up a bit from there, 144.1 to 144.3 is reserved for CW and sideband operation. You probably thought that the 2 meter band was all FM and repeaters. Why would you want to do sideband and Morse code? Well, even though VHF propagation is primarily line of sight, you can take advantage of atmospheric anomalies like tropospheric ducting to carry your two meter signal hundreds to thousands of miles. Sideband and CW are excellent modes for weak signal work. It stands to reason to give them exclusive chunk of spectrum to do some two meter DX. Moving up a bit from the sideband portion of the band, uh, you'll find a frequency of 144.39 megahertz. This is the home of APRS, the Amateur Position Reporting System. APRS is a digital mode using FM or frequency modulation to transmit and receive short digital packets that contain geocoded location information or text. APRS has become a worldwide geolocation and messaging service, so it's all, at, all of its activity is located on one single frequency. Since we're talking digital, most digital operation in the VHF 2 meter band is, is FM using AX.25 style packets. AX.25 is a data communication standard dating back to the 1980s and possibly earlier. First used over the air for packet radio, this mode allows you to transmit and receive data at a blazing 1200 baud on 2 meters or 9600 baud at higher frequencies. With today's gigabit ethernet and 4G data networks, these speeds sound quaint, but packet radio is still a viable method of exchanging text-based information over long distances. You'll commonly find packet users on the frequency of 145.01, 145.03, etc., up to 145.09 megahertz. Speaking of packet, there's an interesting data communications mode called WinLink 2000. This mode uses AX.25 packets to transmit and receive conventional email messages. A great tool for emergency communications, WinLink nodes can be interfaced with a public safety agency's email system to provide another method of sending and receiving internet and email if conventional communication methods are down. You'll either find WinLink stations on the packet frequencies around 145.01 MHz or up a little higher in the experimental and miscellaneous portion of the band. Let's talk a moment about satellite communications. Orbiting above the Earth are scores of amateur radio satellites. These satellites carry digipeters and transponders on them, allowing the ham to communicate using FM, sideband, and digital modes. Early satellites had an uplink on two meters, 
and a downlink on a 10 meter band. But now most modern birds in space are using a combination of 70 centimeters and two meters uplink and downlink. You'll find satellite frequencies between 144.3 and 144.5 megahertz and 145.8 and 146 megahertz. One satellite that is very easy to uh, communicate with is the International Space Station. You'll find uh, the ISS ham radio station running on the digital APRS mode at 145.825, but occasionally they'll be on the air with uh, FM voice at 145.800 or even slow scan TV. A complete list of ISS frequencies can be found in the show notes below. Now we've come to the meat of the two meter amateur radio band, the repeater segment. Of the close to 20,000 amateur radio repeaters on the air, the bulk of them are shoehorned into the two meter band. A repeater works by listening for a low power handheld or mobile transmission, mobile, uh, and mobile transmission on one frequency and retransmitting it or repeating it on another frequency. On the two meter band, you'll find repeaters scattered between 145 and 148 megahertz. A repeater usually has an input frequency 600 kilohertz above or below its output frequency. Although some repeaters will have what we call odd splits when their input is more than 600 kilohertz away from the output frequency. If the repeater has an output frequency below 147 megahertz, the input will be 600 kilohertz below its output. For example, if the repeater is listed at 146.82 megahertz, the input frequency will be 146.22 megahertz. If the repeater's output is above 147 megahertz, then the input frequency will be 600 kilohertz above that. So a repeater at 147.135 megahertz will have an input frequency of 147.735 megahertz. When you program a repeater into your two meter radio, you'll need to remember to program both the input and the output frequency. Most repeaters on the air use analog uh, frequency modulation as their mode of operation. But a growing number of amateur radio repeaters are using digital modes like APCO's, P25, ICOM's D-STAR, and Yezu's Fusion System. There's currently no one digital standard and each mode has their own unique advantages. So while scanning the bands, if you happen to stumble upon a buzzing or grinding noise, it's probably a digital repeater. With all this talk of weak signal, data, satellites, and repeaters, is there any room left for simplex operation? You may just want to talk to your friend on the other side of town, and you don't want to tie up the repeaters with your rag shoes. As, uh, but don't worry, there's plenty of simplex frequencies available on the two meter band. Most band plans have FM simplex channels allocated between 146.4 and 146.58 and 147.42 and 147.50 megahertz with an established national a calling channel at 146.52 megahertz. These dedicated frequencies give hams the ability to talk point to point without the fear of disrupting other modes. But you may need but if the modes if these bands are full, you may need some extra space. So remember, band plans aren't set in stone, and if you do a little bit of research and listening in your local area, you may find an unused frequency in a repeater output section of the band. But remember, if you cause interference with an established and coordinated repeater, satellite link, or digital operator, it is up to you to stop and change frequencies. The FCC has determined that users that are granted a frequency by a coordinating body have precedence over the use of that frequency. So in your search of a simplex frequency, maintain good amateur practice and do a bit of research before picking a random simplex frequency. So to recap, the amateur radio two meter band from 144 to 148 megahertz is active with a wide variety of modes and operations, from CW to sideband, FM, data, and satellites. VHF propagation is typically line of sight, and the, band, and, and the band may sound empty if you scan from the bottom to top. But if you listen on a particular frequency, you may be surprised at what you hear. Use your band plan as a roadmap for finding those little spots of gold on the two meter band. Well, that's it for this episode of Ham Radio Q&A. Read more about amateur radio and antennas on my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. And of course, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. If you have a question you're, uh, you'd like answered, please leave it in the comments below or drop me an email, kb9vbr at jpol-antenna.com. I'm Michael, kb9vbr. Thanks for watching and 73.